Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me here in my home office in Boston today. Uh, I'm Joe Zacharia, a Client Growth Director here with TrialSpark. Uh, today, I'm excited to share with you about more background information about TrialSpark. Uh, but before we jump in, just a little bit about TrialSpark. We are a technology company based in New York City that runs end-to-end -end clinical trials as an alternative to a conventional CRO. Um, so our presentation today is going to be about creating shared infrastructure that increases the speed of clinical development. So like everything we do here at TrialSpark, everything begins with our mission. Uh, we have a pretty ambitious mission here to bring new treatments to patients faster and more efficiently uh, by reimagining the clinical trial process. We really start with some of the primary inefficiencies or challenges that exist in the industry of clinical trials. Uh, the first of which is that amongst eligible patients, only about 2% of potentially eligible patients actually participate in clinical trials. Um, there's a host of reasons for this challenge, but really it's because clinical trials are typically run out of the same academic or commercial clinical trial sites. There's really two to 3,000 of them in the U.S., not that many. And these same clinical trial sites are be being used for all different clinical studies. You can think about if you're running a diabetes study, you might be using the same diabetes sites for the last 15 or 20 years. And over time, the patients at that site are going to be eligible for clinical trials and they'll be uh, participating in clinical trials, but then they'll be recycled and you'll run out of new patients to participate in research. Here at TrialSpark, our goal is to engage the other 98% of patients that haven't historically had access to research at those sites. Similarly, um, from a demand, per from a supply perspective, we also have a shortage of participating sites and PIs or pr primary investigators. So when we think about the ability to fill all the clinical trials in clinicaltrials.gov, we really need about 20 to 50 times more investigators given the pipeline of therapeutics that are coming through uh, just here in the US. And so we really need to democratize access to clinical research from a provider perspective. And lastly, from thinking beside the actual supply of patients and doctors, there's a lot of inefficiencies associated with clinical trials because each individual clinical trial site operates as its own small business. They have their own set of SOPs, their own different technologies and solutions. And these inefficiencies really lead to delays in clinical trials. And each of those delays is associated with monetary value, right? Because the patent life of a drug is ticking from the minute that it's identified. Um, and so we really want to figure out as a kind of a tech company thinking in first principles, how to reimagine that clinical trial engine from the inside out to standardize those procedures, standardize those interactions and create a better engine. So thinking about the patient again, we really want to create a patient centric platform because clinical trials are intimidating for patients. Uh, the trial sites themselves are largely in academic centers where patients can't, can't reach them. But more importantly, there's a misunderstanding of clinical trials amongst the patient community. So patients think that clinical trials are really for terminally ill or debilitating conditions. Not they don't think about clinical trials as a care option. Um, and so when we think about the inaccuracy of information too, patients really need to be spoken to in their natural language um, and in order to be able to participate in research. Even more important though is the barrier for physicians to participate in research. Um, so for physicians have there's significant regulatory hurdles to participate in clinical studies that most physician offices don't want to take on, um, in addition to staff and capital expenses. So one of the anecdotes we always, we always hear from doctors is that they wish they could participate in research, but they don't want to have to hire a clinical research coordinator. They don't want to have to hire um, a clinical research nurse. They don't want to implement quality measures, technology measures, uh, deal with inventory, all of the things that professional sites are taking on. Um, and they, they often say if we were able to really snap our fingers and have a clinical trial in a box and we could just offer clinical trials to our patients, that's what we would want to do. And so that's really what we're setting out to do here at TrialSpark. So we're a clinical research provider that partners with independent physicians, largely in private practices and community hospitals that haven't performed research before. We transform their practices into GCP or ICH compliant, FDA compliant, really trial sites in the U.S that are bespoke to a single study. And so by doing so, we're able to unlock the 98% of patients that aren't currently enrolling in clinical research. And all of our sites and our, all of our studies as a whole are, in, are powered by a standardized technology platform. Um, and so this standardized technology platform 
really incorporates all elements of patient recruitment and handoff to patient scheduling. You can think about this as an e-source platform and an EDC all in one through direct data capture. There's physician payments, data analysis, all of that baked in. Um, so instead of piecing together individual components of a tech stack, we've really built our own homegrown solution that's tailor-made for our trial spark offering. And the reason that this is a little bit better than what we're seeing in the industry is that can, traditionally the CRO, uh, CRO's role is to manage variability uh, at the site level, and each of the sites is responsible for their own recruitment. So here at TrialSpark, we really want to integrate that platform, knowing that the patients are really at the core of research and we're partnering with the physicians that actually treat those patients. And then here at TrialSpark, we are powering the sites themselves. And when we aggregate all of those sites into the full program, there's a lot more operational efficiencies that are created in addition to a better patient experience. And so before we get into actually how our model works, I um, just wanted to share some insights from a recent study that was, was really successful. So we were running a dermatology study for a large pharma sponsor um, where we were less than 20% of sites in the study, but we were responsible for recruiting over 30% of the total patients for the study. Um, we wanted to use this case study because we was able to compare our effectiveness to what we're seeing uh, on a national basis from their other academic and commercial sites, and we're really about 40% faster. This is pretty um, typical of what we're seeing across, across our studies um, in the US, and so we're enthusiastic about dermatology as well as other, other indications that we're able to support. So when we think about our model, it really boils down to three core elements that really make the, make the engine hum. It's the network of our trial sites, it's streamlined trial management, and then it's the actual activities associated with patient recruitment. So our trial sites themselves, um, we actually provide the CRCs and the staffing to make the sites run. As I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest barriers to research is that doctors don't wanna hire clinical research coordinators, that there's a lot of turnover amongst clinical research coordinators. And so we're able to deploy a, a fleet of TrialSpark fully employed CRCs to manage the, manage the research to support the physicians. Because oftentimes we find that the best corollary to a high performing site is a high performing CRC. We also provide each site with standardized equipment. And so this could be actual hardware, like a double lock cabinet or a centrifuge, um, or it could be software, like having their CTMS and their uh, scheduling platform and their, their e-source. But we're able to standardize the equipment in the doctor's office specific to that study. So instead of a conventional site that might be trying to reuse equipment across multiple clinical programs, we're able to take it on a real site-by-site -site basis. And finally, the backend regulatory support, compliance support, quality support, we actually are able to train our physicians, train their office staff to participate in research. We have a Transcelerate approved clinical training program um, and a clinical trainer in-house here at TrialSpark to really make that uh, as, as effective and an even more effective trial site than what we're seeing across the industry. I really want to dial up the point around our clinical research coordinators because they really are the lifeblood of our organization. And so our research coordinators, instead of conventional sites where you might have a CRC staffed across 20 different programs in 12 different, different therapeutic areas, we really focus the efforts of our CRCs uh, around a cluster of sites. And so our sites are geographically located around major metro areas. So instead of overseeing one site and 20 protocols, the CRCs are responsible for maybe four to five sites and, and a handful of protocols. They're able to get deeply fluent around each of those protocols and create meaningful relationships with the PIs and the patients that they see. This also allows for consistent training and PI support so that when PIs are performing potentially subjective rating scales, you can think about this in dermatology or neuroscience, um, the CRC is able to ensure that a PI, uh, each PI that they are interfacing with does carry through that degree of, of uh, consistency as opposed to uh, having multiple CRCs for each individual PI. And again, our network to date is about 900 physicians across over 200 practices. Um, and we are actually able to aggregate the electronic health data associated with all those practices. And it's representative of about 3.3, 3.5 million patient lives. And that EHR data is used uh, to support site level feasibility, study level feasibility, basically making sure that when we put a doctor forward for your study, we know that that doctor sees and treats the patients that you're looking to recruit. So right now, our sites are located in five different metro areas, New York, DC, Chicago, Houston, and Philly. 
but we're really located outside of the major metro areas. So for New York, for instance, most of the academic sites are in Manhattan proper, but the large majority of our sites are deeper into Brooklyn, in northern New Jersey, in Staten Island, where historically patients may have had to commute over an hour to the Mount Sinai's or the New York Presbyterians of the world. But by enabling them to participate in research in their local community, we're able to reduce that barrier to entry and increase the diversity within clinical trials, which I'll get to a little bit later. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the actual trial management itself. So up until now, I've been talking a lot about the sites and the recruitment, but we're, we also want to bring it all together and manage all elements of the trial as a fully outsourced provider of clinical research. And so all of our trials have one single contract and rate card one central IRB, and one set of SOPs. And this really results in accelerated site startup, it results in consistent training, it results in faster data management and project closeout. Um, and again, compared to what we're seeing in other con uh, in conventional research, when we have to piece together multiple pieces of technology, it is just much more efficient, but it also does lead to better data quality. So TrialSpark's technology platform is named Pilot. It's a direct data capture platform, which really means that we have a consistent e-source and EDC that is deployed at all of our sites. And by having that consistent e-source and EDC, we have no transcription errors. And so when I'm talking about transcription, it's really source data verification, which ensures that the EDC matches the actual source data. And this is an issue because with most sites operating with paper source, there's a manual translation from that paper source to EDC that needs to be checked. And it's a very manual and in, in, invasive process that requires clinical research associates to travel out to the sites themselves. Our platform, by using standardized D DDC, standardized e-source across all of our sites, does unlock the potential for remote monitoring and reduces that, that error proneness of source data verification because we're able to fire real-time queries at the point of entry for e-source and not the point of entry for EDC. And so our e-source and EDC solution is also integrated with CTMS for scheduling and for payments. It's recruited on the, it's integrated on the front end with our recruitment platform, it's integrated on the back end with all of our analytics tool and analytics suite. So it really only has one set of logins for the PIs and researchers. And then we're able to share all of this data or the, the data that's appropriate to share with our sponsors in real time. Um, a lot of our technology solutions are powered by AWS. Um, we're using Amazon Connect, Simple Storage Service, Elastic Compute Cloud. Um, even further, we actually think of ourselves a bit in the same vein as AWS, whereas AWS powers tech companies and each tech company as they grow needs server space and needs to store more information. We recognize that biopharma companies as they grow, all clinical stage companies are going to need to run clinical trials. And so whether it's one trial, five trials, 10 trials, here at TrialSpark, we want to create infrastructure that can be reused by biopharma sponsors as they scale to reduce some of those inefficiencies associated with trial startup. And so as companies come back to using a consistent shared infrastructure, they should be able to test more drugs and get these drugs to market faster. So finally, let me touch on our condition-specific recruitment. Um, so whenever we're taking on a protocol, we really want to do our preparation to understand what's motivating our patients to participate in research. We want to create really resonant recruitment materials. So instead of conventional sites that might just be using paper flyers and, and try, trying to um, recruit patients in that way, we want to do our, our detailed research, understand how to, how to speak to these patients and really understand what makes them, what makes them tick. We'll also interact directly with the PIs in our network. Again, we ha have access to these PIs that are they are part of our TrialSpark network, so we're able to understand the concerns of patients um, within our, our certain therapeutic areas. But all this helps to really demystify the clinical trial process. We know that there is a real misconception in the marketplace today of patients wanting to participate in research, and anything we can do to help reduce that barrier and improve access is where we want to be. And so in practice, the way we execute against this is to use those physician-based trial sites to help doctors encourage their own patients to participate in trials. And so these, we, we recognize that that relationship between the physician, the trusted physician and the patient is really what's going to drive a lot of enrollment and, and an appreciation for the protocol and that patient really trusts their doctor. And so it's that relationship that we are preserving the continuity of instead of having that, pa that physician refer the patient out to another site. We're also able to access 70 different EHR instances I mentioned earlier 
to ensure that the patients that we're putting forward to a clinical research program actually have the diseases. And this helps us to reduce the screen fail rate and improve the patient experience. Um, then we also do digital patient recruitment, um, geo-targeting patients in a certain metro area or certain zip codes that might be five or 10 miles away from a clinical trial site because we recognize that not all patients with diseases are seen by existing physicians. They might be having a flare. And so by using the actual trial site itself and that infrastructure complemented with external digital recruitment does create a, a holistic recruitment platform. By using this platform for recruitment and our site network, we've actually found that a byproduct of our model is that we're able to engage a more diverse group of PIs and a more diverse group of patients. Um, so we found that non-white patients at TrialSpark exceed those of traditional sites by about 2x. Um, largely, the African-American and Hispanic communities are more overrepresented in our, in our studies, which is, 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 is great because there's a lot of initiatives that we're seeing to improve patient diversity and patient centricity. We didn't go out to create a diverse platform for patients. This is really a byproduct of our model, but it's one that we really embrace. We really encourage all, all clinical research providers to, to, to try to engage as many and as diverse patients as possible. And so finally, when we actually think about our, our recruitment campaigns, we invest a lot of time and energy in being able to actually speak to the patients. And so this is the, some of, these are some of the materials from the Vitiligo campaign that are that we use across different social media platforms, across different physician offices, um, and all, all, all the different campaigns that were run. So just a little bit more about TrialSpark. As a whole, we do run therapeutic uh, intervention trials in a couple of major therapeutic areas right now. This is really a product of where sponsor interest has been historically. Um, our model is very therapeutic area agnostic, and if sponsors want to partner with TrialSpark, we can create de novo trial sites in as short as six months. Um, when we think about the trials that we've run to date, they've really been around immunology and inflammation, where there's a lot of patients presenting out in private practice, um, and the drugs are largely safe. There are certainly therapeutic areas that don't make sense for the TrialSpark model, where it's an invasive procedure, requires an inpatient stay. Um, for instance, we're not in oncology right now or rare diseases. However, dermatology, respiratory, GI, endocrine metabolic certainly are our sweet spot to date, but we are, we are rapidly expanding into other therapeutic indications. Um, it's hard to give a presentation today and not really talk about COVID-19. I've been really impressed with our TrialSpark operations team uh, adaptability and flexibility to retain patients um, and ensure continuity of care amidst COVID-19. Um, because at, at our core, what we want to do is protect the safety of our patients, protect the safety of our TrialSpark employees, but then also ensure that data quality in the trial is resilient. And so a few things that we've implemented across our programs are remote visits and monitoring powered by Part 11 compliant telehealth solutions. We've implemented direct to patient IP shipping and courier use. We've engaged with some local labs for, for safety assessments. And then again, Pilot is uh, a platform that can be used for remote data entry, or da remote data monitoring. Um, so that's really, again, a byproduct of, of our offering. But I think one of the most unique elements of our model is our cross-site collaboration. And so with our cluster of, of sites in certain geographies, uh, particularly in New York City, we've seen some sites close due to uh, coronavirus potential exposure um, and reduced mobility. And so we've been able to create kind of a, a partnership between our PIs and our sites that they're able to support each other and, and the patients that are associated with each of the sites. So while this is certainly a, a, a trying time for us as a society, we've been really impressed with the, our, our operations team, our physician partners, our patients, our sponsors, everyone in our ecosystem who continues to, to push trials forward in the name of patient care. So that's my presentation for today. Thanks a lot for, for bearing with me and learning a bit more about TrialSpark. Um, should you guys have any questions or wish to connect, I can be reached at joe at trialspark.com. And for more information about TrialSpark, including our coronavirus related activities, uh, you can find us at trialspark.com backslash sponsors. All right. Thanks, everybody.